Hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode of Little Liturgies, an online prayer to help you during your time of at home or at school learning. Let us begin in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. So, my friends, this week we light our third candle of our Advent wreath, which is the pink candle representing joy. And we are joyful because we're almost at the end of our Advent journey, which when we get there, we celebrate the gift of the newborn King, Jesus the Messiah. Yay! Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah, I can't believe Christmas is almost here. So to prepare our hearts then for this great and beautiful gift, uh, let's call to mind anything that might keep us from the communion of love and ask the Lord for his mercy, his healing, and his peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we gather together as the little liturgy family that takes the final steps towards the gift of the newborn King, fill our hearts with your joy and help us to share this joy with one another. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. So my friends, this week we're going to hear another story about John the Baptist. It's um, from the Gospel of John. And for those of you who have received your Catholic Youth Bible, the reading that we often use um, for the giving of the Bible is talks about uh, kind of a creation story. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. It's a story about Jesus. And just after that part, uh, which you would have had when we received your gift of your Bible, is this part here about John the Baptist and how he's here to prepare the way uh, for the coming of the Messiah. But he himself is not the Messiah. So, the reading is from the Gospel of John, chapter 1, verses 6 to 8, and then we jump to verse 19 to 28. So, John 1, 6 to 8, and then 19 to 28. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. They said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan, where John was baptizing. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So, my friends, uh, 
Last week we heard another story about John the Baptist and where he was baptizing in the River Jordan, a, a baptism of repentance, and people were amazed by John because he was pretty extreme. You know, we heard last week about how he didn't own any material possessions, he didn't have a house or live in the cities, he lived in the desert and he had this like camel hair clothing which ooh, would be so itchy I'm sure and he had a leather belt and he ate locusts and wild honey and he basically lived on proclaiming the gospel message and people came from all around, all of Judea to see him and to experience his baptism of repentance. So John the Baptist, like he was a name, like people knew who he was and he was just had a gravitas, a, like a attention that people wanted to see him. And so now we follow it up with this reading from the Gospel of John where people come, uh, representatives from the priests and the Levites, and they ask John the Baptist, who are you? Which is understandable. We've got all these people coming around, visit him, visiting him, and they're like, what, what, like, explain yourself, like, tell us what, the, what does this mean? And what's amazing about John the Baptist, I find, is his humility. He doesn't claim to be something more than he is. He's like, I'm not the Messiah. I'm not the prophet Elijah. I'm not one of the prophets of old. Like, I'm, I'm just John the Baptist. My, my job is to make straight the path for someone else. I'm, I'm here to point out uh, the Lamb of God, which is a scene that will come uh, later in the Gospel of John. And that's it. And he says, I'm not even worthy to untie the thong of his sandals, which probably doesn't make sense. It's a kind of an odd phrase for our modern age. So it would be the equivalent of saying, I'm not worthy to even untie his shoelace to take off his shoe, uh, which is a pretty, like, this is the job of servants. And John the Baptist is like, I'm not worthy even to be a servant to the Messiah. Now, why would John the Baptist say that? Well, I think it highlights how, well, for example, take our grade four Bible ceremony, my friends, which has the other parts of this reading from the Gospel of John, chapter one, that we read. And when you receive or have received your youth Bible, there's nothing that you had to do to receive it other than be like in grade four. And that's a beautiful symbol for how the Word of God wants to come to you. And it's not like you had to earn it. It's just a gift that God wants to give to all of you. And John the Baptist, he's very aware of that. Like he doesn't claim to be something great or powerful. He just like, I'm just here to prepare the way of the Lord. And What's so beautiful about him doing that is he makes very clear that it's God who has chosen John the Baptist to follow him. And it is God who wants to choose the people to receive the gift of love, healing, and everlasting life. Which also means, my friends, that God wants to choose and does choose all of you. God loves all of you, my friends, not because something that you have done, not because you were good at this and didn't do that. Like God has created each and every one of you, my friends, in his likeness and image because he loves you. And that is the core of what baptism is about. It is a gift that God gives to everyone who wishes to receive it. God, of course, you know, wants to give it to you, but doesn't want to push it on people. Uh, but God loves everyone and wants to give this gift of baptism because God loves you. And I like to remember that, some, my friends, because, you know, sometimes, especially during Advent and Lent, it's a time of reflecting upon our actions uh, so that we can be prepare for Christmas after Advent or Easter after Lent. And, you know, there's a sense of be ready, prepare, the Lord is coming. And when I do that, I'm like, okay, there's certain things I can change, I can improve on for sure. But then, if I'm honest, my friends, there's certain things I'm like, oh, no matter how hard I've tried to change this, I can't. I just I 
can't, I'm not, I am not yet a saint, my friends. I'd love to be, but I'm just, I'm just not there yet. But that doesn't change God's love for me. I don't have to earn God's love. God wants to give it to me and to you. Now, at the same time, I don't want to take it for granted. Like I, when people love us, it's a truly beautiful thing, my friends. You can't really explain why it has happened. So we try to honor that gift. We receive it with openness and love in our hearts. And then we try to respond in a way that cultivates, nurtures, and protects that love that we have received by, you know, saying thank you, doing acts of charity and selflessness and uh, forgiveness and mercy to help grow these gifts of love and, and relationships that we have in our lives. But the relationship we have with God is very special, my friends. It's not dependent on what we have done. It purely flows from the fact that God chooses you and chooses me. And that is a beautiful thing. And so as we move uh, towards Christmas with joy in our hearts, let us know that that joy is there because God wants to give it to us. God cares about you and is very, um, wants to be among us, to be a part of your lives. And that's what we will celebrate when, the, when Jesus comes uh, to Bethlehem and to our lives through the gift of the Incarnation. So now, my friends, let us, in thanksgiving, um, give thanks to God for our relationships of love in our lives. So first, let's give thanks for the gift of God, uh, for Jesus, the Holy Spirit, our Heavenly Father, the Trinity, the communion of love of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit who are, who are one. Um, we thank them for creating this beautiful life, this beautiful world, this universe that we get to be a part of. Um, what a truly astounding gift it is to be alive and to be able to be a part of this great um, cosmic drama of love. And so we thank God for this beautiful gift of life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, and thanksgiving for your families, um, for all of your loved ones in your life. We thank uh, God for the gift of these relationships and that we get to share and receive love from one another. Uh, let's ask for God's blessing and peace and protection and healing upon all of our families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, in thanksgiving for our friendships. You know, our friendships at school or in our, our uh, groups that we belong to or, you know, sports activities or um, other organizations that you may be a part of, clubs, that we thank God for our friends and that God may bless them and help us to grow in friendship. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray, my friends, uh, for all of the members of our loved ones who are sick, that they may experience healing and peace we also pray for caregivers, um, that they may be strengthened um, during this time of loving their loved ones and helping them to recover or, or making their final days comforting or com comfortable for those who are about to go to the kingdom, that they may be strengthened. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I'd like to pray, my friends, for the poor the widow, the orphan, especially for people who might be far away from family or friends during the Christmas season, that they may be gathered into communities of care and love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Let's pray for peace, my friends. Uh, let's pray for peace in our families, in our community, in our, in our world. Um, the peace may come to all of these lands and to our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And lastly, my friends, my friends, let us pray for all of our loved ones who have died. Do you know someone who has passed away recently? I know that it uh, can be very tricky during the Christmas season to be, you know, joyful when you have a loved one who has passed away, especially if this is your first Christmas without them. 
Um, but we know that they are with God and they are at peace. And so we pray for them and we ask that our prayers may be brought by the angels to them into heaven. And, um, and that during this Christmas season, we may experience their closeness. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gathering all our prayers together, my friends, let us say the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. So my friends, um, I've been trying to pick a little activities for you to do. And, you know, for the last week of school before the Christmas break, I love to do something kind of with like gingerbread, whether it be like some of my most fondest memories of being a child, which was a super long time ago, but I still remember it was like making gingerbread with my aunt Jean. Uh, so in the description below is a handout that has uh, how to make gingerbread cookies or gingerbread houses. And I appreciate though that that's kind of involved, so you may not be able to do that at school. But on the second page of the handout uh, is how to make gingerbread houses out of graham crackers, which so it's a kind of a quicker way. You don't have to do any baking in order to make them. And it's super fun. I've done it lots of times, no matter kind of what age you are. It's just, it just, you know, cool. You get to make something out of uh, gingerbread crackers with icing and then decorate it. Um, so if you have the time, I invite you to do it either with your class or um, at home with your family. It's a great time to spend the uh, great way to spend the holiday season uh, together and celebrate the gift of the newborn king. Before we go, the school of the week. Okay, my friends. Let's see what we got here. Oh, so this is the new uh, batch of names for uh, for our little liturgy. So we got like 93 names in here, I think. And the winner is... Santa Maria Goretti. Yay! Congratulations, Santa Maria Goretti. Yeah, it was there just a few weeks ago. So lovely. Uh, so let us ask the Blessed Mother to pray for all of our students, teachers, and staff at uh, Santa Maria Goretti School. But of course, we ask her to pray for all of our schools. Hail Mary. Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you, my friends, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Merry Christmas!